I will present a normal FACO mantification. Present thesis at 2 and 10 o'clock. Injection of Escalastica. Tunnel session at 9 o'clock. Look for the details in the book. The tunnel session is a quite difficult maneuver. It's a lamella cut. Next is the rexis. I use here the sister tome, which is a bent needle. Pinch the interior capsule, move needle to the periphery, and then create a flap. Difficult to see here. Then you start with the rexis, you move the flap and perform a circular rexis. Instead of the sister term you can use of course a capsular rexis forceps. The rexis should be not too big and not too small. Very important is that you always complete the rexis. Never, re never leave a rest of the flap otherwise the phaco tip will suck in the flap and cause a posterior capsular defect. The next step is hydrodissection, always through the tunnel, never through paracentesis. You will see a propagating wave behind the nucleus. Then is the next step is FACO. Insert the FACO tip, infusion on, First remove the epinucleus in order to have a nice good in view to the nucleus and start with the grooving. Always focus on the bottom of the groove. Focus on the bottom of the groove and make long movements in order to remove the nucleus. This is a hard nucleus, very dense. Focus on the bottom. If you see the red reflex, you deep enough. This was the cracking, which is easy in this case due to the dense nucleus. The same maneuver with the first half of the nucleus. Next step is removal of quadrants. Faker mode quadrant removal, high aspiration, high Faker power. Always remove all fragments of the nucleus. Now the second quadrant is removed. Remove all fragments. Every fragment will cause an anterior uveitis. Don't remove the epinucleus in this step. You need it as a scaffold, as a protection for the, for the posterior capsule. Only remove the nucleus in this step. The phaco tip remains always in the middle of the eye and the push-pull or the manipulator feeds the phaco tip with the nuclear fragments. The phaco tip on its own remains stable in the middle of the pupil. And the manipulator or push-pull feeds the phaco tip with the nuclear fragments. Careful now that the posterior capsule is not aspirated into the phaco tip. The next step is epinucleus removal. This is a, a bit lower aspiration and no phaco energy. The 
then the next faker mode is uh, irrigation and, and aspiration. We use a bimano handpiece. An alternative is of course the monomanual coaxial handpiece. This method is in my eyes easier um, to use. This is epinucleus which is removed the irrigation hand pieces helps the aspiration hand piece if a fragment gets stuck inside the opening little polishing of the interior capsule which is not necessary but it uh, reduces the fibrosis then um, change of the hand pieces in order to remove the nasal part of the cortex which is done now little polishing of the interior capsule The next step is the implantation of the IOL. First injection of viscoelastica through the paracentesis to inflate the capsular bag. And the next step will be the implantation of an IOL one piece or three piece. This is a one piece IOL which is easier to implant. Look at the drawing on the cartridge which shows the implantation, the correct implantation of the IOL into the cartridge. Hold the injector like a pencil and insert the IOL. Especially for the three piece IOL, the first haptic should come to lie inside the capsular bag. With one piece, it's actually easy either way. But always double check now that both haptics are inside the capsular bag and not inside the sulcus. The upper haptic, for example, is in the, in the sulcus. Now it's inside the capsular bag. Always double check that both haptics are located inside the capsular bag. The final step is um, removal of the scholastics, then injection of Cinacef or Cifiroxim as uh, an ophthalmitis prophylaxis and finally hydration of the paracentesis. Thank you very much.